let's start actually writing some front-end programming code. So our goal with our first project is to be able to build something like this. We'll have a, a quiz game where you will prompt the player with a question. They will have a couple of options. And if they get it right, their score goes up um, and they can move on to the next question. If they get it wrong, their score doesn't go up. So it'll be a really simple app for us to start testing our skills in web programming. Uh, before we even get to that, though, we're going to build just a, a simple about page that will allow us to learn the three languages of front-end programming. So we have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So let me flip over to a whiteboard so we can actually diagram this out a little bit. So we've got three languages in web programming, uh, in web front-end programming. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So the hypertext part of this is just a way to say that we have text documents that are linked via hyperlinks to other text documents. So when you go to Wikipedia, you can see an article, it's full of hyperlinks to other articles. That's the hypertext part of this. The markup language is a little bit easier to explain um, with a little snippet of HTML. So I'm going to write that down here. So let's say we're making this quiz game and we want a header at the top of the page that says quiz game. So the markup part of this is we have some content. We're saying quiz game with an exclamation point but we're wrapping it in this other piece of information. So these are this is an H1 tag, we'll see that in a second, um, but this is a way to tell the browser that this content is a header. Uh, and browsers will, by default, make that big and bold on the page. We can control that with CSS, um, but that, that would be the default styling for an H1. We can also see with if we create a different element, so a button, um, Let's say this is click me. So we have another element here and we are wrapping it with a different kind of markup. So we have a different tag around it called button, which tells the browser that, that this should be a button. This should be something that the user can click on and potentially have some logic that runs when that button is clicked. So HTML is all about the content of your page. By default, browsers will apply certain styling to these elements um, based on which tag we're using. So button versus header versus paragraph versus image. Uh, but primarily, HTML is about the content of your page. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet. So CSS is uh, not about content, but is about the presentation. So an example of CSS might look like this button color blue. So this is saying that buttons on our page should have a text color of blue. So HTML doesn't care what the text color of this button is, that's CSS's responsibility to define that. So you can set up grid structures, you can load different kinds of fonts on your page, you can change the color um, and font size, etc., etc., with CSS. So CSS is all about the presentation. And then let's take a look at JS. So JS, uh, this is JavaScript. JavaScript is all about the behavior of your page, the interactivity. So an example line might look like this, window dot scroll to zero, 100. And this line of code is telling the browser to scroll zero pixels horizontally and 100 pixels vertically. So we're saying essentially scroll the window down slightly. So JavaScript is all about this kind of behavior and interactivity of your page. So behavior down here. So this could be something as complex as making a game, or it could be something simpler, like when you click a button, a modal window pops up 
um, and, and your cart opens or something along those lines. So these are the three languages, programming languages that your browser understands. And these are the three that we're going to have to learn as we start our journey in front end web development. They're, we're going to create them as text files and each is going to have a different extension. So HTML is going to be .html, CSS is going to be .css, and JS is going to be uh, .js. It's going to seem like a lot at first. I know that. <laughs> this is a crash course and it's going to feel like a water a fire hose is being turned on. But stick with me. We're going to go through the motions of building out an HTML page, a CSS file, and a JavaScript file to get a feel for how these work. And then we'll, we'll get to building more of the quiz application. But before we do that, I want to take a look at what happens if we go to a website and uh, play with disabling the CSS and JavaScript so you can get a better sense of what I was talking about in the whiteboard. So here I've got this extension. Let's start with disabling the CSS. So I'm just on Amazon's front page. Looks familiar. Disable all the styles. And we've pulled out all of the styling information. We're, we're really just seeing the HTML. So the HTML can define some hyperlinks, it can define some text, um, some horizontal rules, some images. Um, but without the CSS, this is a, pair, a fairly non-functional page. The information is there, but it's hard for us to, to parse. Uh, let's turn the CSS back on. And uh, before we disable the JavaScript, let me highlight some of the things that are uh, JavaScript based here. So we've got this slider uh, where I can advance and look through uh, some different advertisements on the main page. If I hover over some of these things, like the prime button, we get this dimming of the screen and something pops up on top of the screen. And if I start typing like soap, we get these suggestions that pop up um, and the, the screen dims. So now if I go back and let's go to this extension, disable the JavaScript, refresh the page, the slider is gone. I can no longer see a series of ads. I just get the first one. If I go hover over the prime button, a lot of that like functionality where things were popping up um, has disappeared. Same for the search. There, there's nothing interactive happening as I'm typing um, in the background. Uh, to do to execute a search and, and see related searches, I have to actually type it all in and then hit search. And you know what? While we're at it, let's take a look at the actual files that have been sent. So I'm opening up the developer tools. We'll, when we start working in VS Code, we'll see how to do this. But um, this tab here in the developer tools lets me snoop on all of the files that are being loaded. So if I refresh the page here, I can watch all of the files that are requested by our browser um, as they are requested in real time. So all the way at the top here is a document, which is HTML. So this is the HTML that uh, Amazon server, so they just have a computer somewhere, or you know, a whole bunch of computers that are set up to accept requests. So when we go to Amazon.com, our browser knows how to contact that server, ask for a specific file, and here we go. We get the HTML back. So here is some of the HTML. Um, let's scroll down a bit. So here we can see some of the stuff like I was diagramming on the whiteboard is that you have some text and you have it wrapped in some tags. So this is the, the markup of the page. This is the content. And if I come up here, let's filter and take a look. We, we've got uh, some JavaScript files that came in. Let's look at this one, pretty it. Uh, so one thing that we're seeing here is a lot of this is not terribly readable. Uh, when we get into JavaScript, you'll see that a lot of these variable names are single letters, and that's because it's really important to send as few bytes as possible. When we go, when our browser goes to contact amazon.com and uh, get back HTML and CSS and JavaScript, Amazon servers want to strip out as much as possible from those files so they're really trim, so they're fast to send over the wire back to our browser. So a lot of this won't make sense uh, because it has been so-called minified, but we can see here that they're using a library called jQuery, which is it used to be a very popular library um, not that long ago. Uh, but that So that's a JavaScript file that actually came from Amazon. Um, let's check out the CSS. 
So here's one of the CSS files that came down. Let's scroll around, see if we can find anything interesting. Here we go. So we saw h1 was a tag that I used. This is setting up the font weight, how bold some text is, the font size, you know, how big is it in pixels, the line height, um, how much space there is between lines. So this is an example of some real world CSS that was sent down that, that is influencing how this page is displayed. The last thing that I'll mention as we're looking through the developer tools here is that all of these files that have been sent to the browser happen over uh, what is called HTTP. So HTTP is Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It's a way for us to talk to, um, from our browser, a client to a server, you know, Amazon's computer that has its HTML and CSS and JavaScript. Um, it's a structured way for us to talk from our browser to that server. So let's take a look at the main HTML file. So our browser basically, uh, we, we put in this URL and then it kicks off a request to amazon.com. It says, I would like to get, and then um, specifically here, we're, we're asking for the home page. That's what the slash means. And then what it sends back to us is um, over HTTP, what it sends back to us is this HTML file. And that's the same process for the images that are loaded, the, the CSS, the JavaScript, et cetera. Um, it's all going over this hypertext transfer protocol. So with that, uh, I'm gonna end this video. And in the next one, we will hop into actually setting up a project and writing our first HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files.